and good evening. We're going to go ahead and get started. We have an exciting, fun, emotional, touching, lovely night tonight. I'm really excited. This is one of our signature events as we get to really tell you a little bit about your senior uh, and their year here and the work that they've done with our faculty tri tributes, which will be in a few minutes. So we're really excited about that. Um, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for being here, making a commitment to be here this weekend. And I usually, traditionally, at graduation, I have some words for the senior class, but I wanted to do that tonight so that tomorrow um, we can, it, it'll be hot enough, so we're going to be inside. So I, I wanted to kind of share some thoughts with the senior class as they move on uh, tonight, and then I'll open us in prayer. So class of 2021, it's not long ago that you transitioned to ninth grade from middle school. I remember it distinctively because Ruth Ann gave me specific directions on how I was to act as the head of school. She asked me, Dad, do not embarrass me by acting silly at community times or pep rallies. Don't sing like you do at home in between classes. And please, 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 please never, ever, ever come to one of my Bible studies and give a devotion. So, Ruth Ann, we made it, didn't we? <laughs> we made it. I followed her directions, and here we are. We all made it. Again, as you were with, if you were with us this afternoon, you know, that's kind of the theme. God is good. We've made it through a year, and we're really excited about that. I can't believe 180 days. When we started the school year, I thought we would, you know, have some times where we'd be out of school, but God certainly has blessed us 180 days in person, mask wearing, teaching, and learning. Nahum 1 7 declares, The Lord is good, a refuge in times of trouble. He cares for those who trust in him. We were together this year. We played sports. We won titles. We had homecoming together, a little different. We had a prom with a king and queen. We had a way, way different spiritual life week with Rick and Mick. <laughs> we had an average senior prank, average. We survived a car line where a tree just fell straight through car line into the parking lot and did some damage on some cars, but no one was hurt. And I've heard this rumor that we even had some kind of camping event on the football field. Hmm. We did almost everything this year to prepare you for the next transition in your life next fall. Four years, think about it, four years of high school, it's not very long. It certainly isn't going to be long in college. It will go by fast. But it will be a defining four years in your life. Your mental learning life. Your relational social life and certainly your spiritual life. So I have one big question tonight, class of 2021. How will you think as you leave Westminster, as you leave the Westminster bubble and you go into a more progressive, worldly bubble on a college campus, how will you think? Now, I hope that we have challenged you here at Westminster to think. And I know we have cha challenged you to think in biblical terms. We certainly want to take that with us. But I want you to consider two ways of thinking when you go off to college. Will your mind rake Or will your mind dig?
you got a choice. You can rake or you can dig. John Piper said, if you rake, you get leaves. If you dig, you get diamonds. If you've got a raking mind, if your mind is a raking mind, you'll settle for leaves. If you've got a digging mind, you'll get diamonds. Class of 2021, my prayer is that you will have a digging mind over a raking mind for the next four years. Now, how do you do that? How do you have a digging mind? Something that goes deep, stays off the surface. Three things. And you've done it here at Westminster. The question is, are you going to do it somewhere else? And you have to make that decision. Number one, you've got to stay in God's word. Number two, you've got to stay in God's church. And number three, you've got to surround yourself with friends who are godly. Don't believe all that you hear next year. Go to God's word and dig deep to test everything out, just like many of you did during Spiritual Life Week. Dig deep into God's word. Go deeper and get down and dirty in God's word where the diamonds are. When you stay on top with a rake, you just stir up the leaves. They don't have any value. It's just a mess and no wisdom. Don't leave your spiritual growth and development to chance. You've been challenged here to think about your eternity, to think about spiritual things. Be proactive. Join a Bible study group. Join a church, one that will challenge you to go deeper in your faith and your relationship with Jesus. See, the world wants you to stay in the leaves where it's easy where it's dangerous, where the snakes hide, and the fire burns easy. But to find the diamonds, the things that last, you have to go deeper in your relationship with Jesus in his word and in corporate worship. In addition to going deeper in God's word and availing yourself to biblical teaching and community worship at church, you must prioritize time for fellowship with other Christians. Develop strong relationships with people who believe what you do and who think like you do in a Christian way. To dig deep and find true diamonds, you also need someone to link arms with. Two shovels digging for diamonds are better than one. Three shovels, four shovels, five shovels digging for diamonds is better than one. You have been salt and light at Westminster in the classroom, on the athletic field, and in the fine arts arena. But what will you be in 85 days from now in a new, very different society away from the conference of people and things you know and love? My prayer is that you begin the next chapter of your learning with a digging man, mind that digs deep into the truth of God's word. Goes to church weekly to feast on spiritual food that will sustain you and give you energy to dig deeper. And finally, that you will seek others to dig with you so that you can dig deeper and deeper and deeper and get to the diamonds that are below the surface. When you find the diamonds, I hope part of our responsibility at Westminster is to send you out to be salt and light. I hope that when you find those diamonds, when you find those nuggets, when you have a deep relationship with Jesus Christ, that you do what God, Jesus, told us to do. Go. Go to Clemson. Go to Georgia. And tell everybody about him. Share the diamonds that you find. Class of 2021, thanks for your leadership this year. It's been a challenge in so many different ways. But you have done an amazing job pivoting and adjusting. I'm proud of you, and I wish you God's grace as you launch onto your university campus with the full armor of God, Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, be strong in the Lord and his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, 
against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God, so that the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm, with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And they will come. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this awesome opportunity to be in person and to transition, to go out. As you said, go and tell the world about my son. And Lord, this class of 2020, very talented fun, energetic class with a, with a lot of exciting accolades and celebration today. I pray that they dig deep into your word. I pray that they won't stay on the surface, that they will go deeper into your word. I pray that they get involved in a church to learn more about you and that they would surround themselves with others, Lord, so that they would stay out of the surface, question everything, and be ready, Lord, to honor you in all that they do. We thank you for this partnership with our parents. We thank you for our faculty and staff and how they have poured into these students, not only in academics, but spiritually. And we just thank you again for this time. And we pray for your blessing and your spirit to be here tonight as we continue to celebrate. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. This is my very favorite event of all of our end of the year events, and we're really excited that you're all here. So seniors, a couple things. We've had quite a year together, and I want each one of you to know how much I love you, and I'm proud of you, and we're just excited to celebrate you tonight. I love this event because your parents get to see um, how much we love and value and know each one of you and just the ways that you have left a legacy here at the school. So enjoy this evening. There will be laughter and tears and everything in between. So I'm really excited to celebrate with you. Um, just some directions for how this night will work. Um, when I finish, our teachers will come up and begin sharing their speeches for each one of you. Um, they will start their speech by saying your name. And at that point, you will come up on this stage using the stairs over here. And you'll stand up here with the teacher um, while they speak about you. And then you can come back down when they finish. So we are so excited um, for tonight and ready to begin. Thanks. Benjamin Bayless, never met a stranger, friend, or teacher that he did not greet warmly. He takes the time to ask people how they are doing. His gregarious nature will serve him well in life. Benjamin, as you leave the familiar world of Westminster, reflect upon your study of Virgil's Aeneid in Latin. Like you, Aeneas had to leave a comfortable world where he had spent his formative years. You do not need to face the level of hardship that Aeneas endured in order to experience the heroic transformation from victim to victor. What helped Aeneas was his pietas, that is, his sense of loyalty and duty. He became the prototype of Roman Stoicism. Aeneas's life had a purpose, precisely because he carried heavy responsibilities. The goal of his life was not happiness, but a mission. They gave his life meaning. As you leave Westminster, reflect on how Aeneas's story 
can inform our own lives. And let us together add to Aeneas's Stoicism the active daily practice of grace and gratitude. Okay, I enjoyed it. When Russell Reams demonstrated in Latin class a knowledge of ancient history far beyond the high school level, I suggested that he take the formidable National Roman Civilization exam. In his junior and senior years, he completed the 45-minute exam in less than seven minutes and earned a gold medal each time. Russell, in college, you will be among a small group of students who read widely and are guided by genuine intellectual curiosity about the ancient world. You will distinguish yourself further by doing one more thing that is a bit tedious, but not impossible. Mastering the ancient and modern languages required for serious scholarship. You have time, but the window of opportunity is rapidly closing. Mastering the basics is the foundation for success in every field. Foreign languages are foundational for a high level of scholarship in ancient history. You have the active intellectual interests that will serve you well in graduate school. But the grind of daily study in languages over the next few years is a bridge that must be crossed to reach your very ambitious goals. Mary Rushton, you are a mature and diligent student who is always cheerful and ready to serve those around you and have a contagious smile that radiates your joy in the Lord. You're not afraid to take on a challenge and you have been involved in a wide array of activities and service opportunities. I enjoyed teaching you for four years and in Spanish one, you achieved an impressive national Spanish exam score by being in the top 4% in the nation. And you did a wonderful job being the Spanish club secretary. In Spanish four honors, I loved hearing about and seeing your passion for ministering to kids in the Good News Club. And you created engaging Spanish lessons for the lower school and taught the lessons enthusiastically. And today, you were the recipient of the Christian Leadership Award, recognizing your godly um, leadership at our school. Um, your biblical worldview and love for the Lord are so clearly evident in your artwork. As I looked at your artwork online, I was struck by your clear presentation of your love for the Lord, shining through your artwork and how you truly give God the glory through your artistic talent. Mrs. Hornsby said, you have showcased what being the hands of Jesus looks in art. Your art worships our Lord in a very direct way. Thank you, Mary Rushton, for your genuine kindness and love of others. You are an artistically gifted student and an incredible leader and entrepreneur who loves to help your school, your church, and community. As a leader at our school, you fearlessly co-led Westminster's first breast cancer fund run to raise money for a university hospital and did a fantastic job organizing and executing this fundraiser. At your church, you regularly volunteer to serve in nursery and in the community. You created and co-directed the Little Picasso Art Camp. I think that's so cool and worked at Augusta Pediatrics as the office assistant for two summers. As you enter this new chapter in life, may the Lord continue to use you for his glory as you go and make disciples at UGA. May his word continue to be a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Um, I have a journal that Mr. Waldecker designed and I hope you can use it to write down answers to prayer and all that God's doing in your life.
Luke Wells. Luke, you're an exceptionally bright and skilled student. I am honored to have had the privilege of teaching you these past two years. You are encouraging to others, disciplined and driven. This can be seen by how you've applied yourself in the classroom, the excellence that you strive for each day, and the willingness you have to help others. In addition to your work in the classroom, you have also shown expertise on the sports field. You have played competitive tennis for five years and run cross country for the past two years. As a result of these efforts, you were named the boys singles tennis region champion and all-star preps best of the CSRA player of the year, in addition to help lead the tennis team to its first region championship in 12 years. You did very well at physics, having taken both AP Physics I and AP Physics C, and I know these efforts will serve you well as you enter into college to become an electrical engineer. I think that the skills gained also assisted you and various other members of the senior lunch group as you plotted ways to beat Sam Williamson in Minecraft <laughs> or dominate when playing Among Us. Lastly, as you prepare to go to Clemson this fall, I would leave you with this. And we pray that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and may please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God. Colossians 1.10. Hannah Daniel. Each school day for two years, I was blessed by spending a little time with Hannah. I saw the pleasure she takes in beauty. I heard the fruits of her meditation on poems and stories. I lifted up her prayer requests, which reflected so much care for her friends and family. I also had the privilege of collaborating with her on the literary magazine and her own artistic works. I have a little collage which Hannah made at my house, and it incorporates words from the great Gatsby. Life starts all over again when it gets crisp in the fall. Its colors are subdued, autumn browns and oranges, but its message is hopeful. And I often look at it and think of Hannah. She finds inspiration and solace all around her in art, nature, and people. As a result, she is peaceful and confident beyond her years. Hannah has always been quick to reach out to show concern for me when I was having a tough day or experiencing the ups and downs of new motherhood. She has a gentle spirit and a calm presence, which she imparts to others even when she has her own difficulties to face. Hannah, I love that you see the world as full of possibilities, but you are also sober-minded enough to see its pain and its brokenness and to work for its redemption. My prayer for you is that you grow increasingly sure about and aware of God's vast love, the source of our certain hope. As Paul writes to the Ephesians, being rooted and grounded in love, May you have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge. Paul reminds us that knowing how much God loves us requires strength, but also gives strength. I see roots of that strength in you already, and the depth to which these roots can grow is infinite. Caroline Weaver. Caroline wants to make everything beautiful. She works in a place that sells soft, sweet clothes perfectly suited to sweet, cuddly babies. She creates works of art that celebrate sophisticated, iconic women and their graceful fashion statements. She comes to school each day in polished, put-together pink ensembles like that one. But Caroline's love of beauty doesn't just apply to physical style and grace. 
She loves stories about hope and redemption and happiness. She cares about moral beauty, the beauty of a virtuous choice or an appropriate behavior. She has a vision for the ideal of what should be, not just what is, and she doesn't want to settle for less. I have seen Caroline grimace and even physically recoil when things are not beautiful <laughs> or virtuous or right. These include the grotesque conformity and malleable morals in a novel like Brave New World, the toxic courtship between Jane Eyre and Edward Rochester, or our own culture's tendency to hastily cancel and discard works of art from the past without seeing what is redeeming about them. Caroline, I believe that God has instilled this desire for beauty within you to help you accomplish his work in the world. The famous serenity prayer in its full version expresses submission to God in these words. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you forever in the next. This is a reminder that God will make all things beautiful in his time. In the meantime, anticipating eternity, be sure to make beauty where you can, but also extend grace where you do not yet see it. We're all blocks of unfinished marble here on earth, and God's power works within us to chip away the sin that hides and distorts the masterpieces he created. tricky. We're going to make it. Okay. So many years of seeing so many graduates come through here, and we had a little burp last year, but we're back. It's so exciting to see this class. And I have just one that I want to honor tonight, um, Jonathan Apostle. Now, as a teacher, you, can you have a favorite student? Well, after looking at Jonathan's impressive list of STEM classes, he's received so many distinctions and accolades for his computer, physics, biology, robotics, and math classes. And then outside of school, he volunteered as a tutor, AV service at his church, played varsity basketball, and was involved in the student robotics club. Oh, and don't forget, he's a salutatorian. Jonathan is driven, goal-oriented, and he works until he gets something right. And it's no wonder his senior superlative was most likely to find a cure for cancer. It was an, if I was an employer, I'd hire him right now. Now, I asked the faculty, how would you describe Jonathan? He's respectful, polite, humble, consistent, and persistent. And he's too old for me to adopt, so I can't do that. <laughs> Teaching him for six of the last seven years, he has consistently displayed kindness, patience, and humbleness, and meekness. Let me tell you, he's a determined worker. He never takes a break from learning. Amanda Lang, in her book, The Power of Why, said this, curious kids, they learn and they enjoy it. And that, more than any body of knowledge, is what they need for the future. It's not what to think, but how to think. And that gives you the challenge to overcome challenges and solve new problems. So Jonathan, learning the how or understanding the why isn't lasting satisfaction. Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they shall be satisfied. So, I challenge you, balance your thirst for knowledge and mastery with what is truly satisfying, and you will be an alumnus we will hear about for years to come. And tonight, Jonathan will also be receiving the University of Washington's collectible Mint Inbox Control-Alt-Hack, the white hat hacking for fun and profit card game.
Eliza McNeil Morris. Come on up. So I first got to know you in my English and FLP classes, arguably not your favorites. Not everyone loves verb conjugations like I do. I remember you staying in the background more often than not, though I do have a pretty awesome video of seventh grade girls performing a rap about demonstrative pronouns in which you stand out. Since then, it has been my pleasure to watch you transform into someone who does stand out, whether that be on the stage, on the homecoming court, as junior class president, in your business class, or as prom queen. Your cheerful spirit and people-loving personality shine brightly and encourage others. Always the life of the party, you have also often been the mediator and peacemaker in your class, whether that be through conversations with me or offers of popcorn to ease the tension in, during disagreements. McNeil, <laughs> your road has not been easy, and there have been some bumps along the way. However, you have a village of people who love you deeply and who want you to do your best because they know the amazing things that you are capable of and the many talents that the Lord has given you. While procrastination might be your true middle name, you never failed to surprise me when you showed up at the 11th hour and pulled through time and time again, today being no exception. <laughs> so, as you leave Westminster and head to Nashville to attend the Aveda Institute, I wanted to remind you of the advice I've given you several times this year to persevere. In the movie Frozen 2, Anna sings, just do the next right thing. Take a step, step again. I'll make the choice to hear that voice and do the next right thing. I know it's sometimes hard to take the next step, but I pray that you keep taking more steps that will lead you to your life's passion and calling. And more than anything else, I pray that you choose to listen to the voice of the one who made you and loves you more than any of us can, God our Father. Ask him to lead you in your next steps and help you do the next right thing, something he promises us in Psalm 32, 8, when he says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. I love you, and I'm so proud of you. So take your stylish, swanky self to Nashville, and as I've said to you many times this year, make it happen. <laughs> I'd like to ask um, Kara, Gabrielle, come up, please. <laughs> come on over here. <laughs> in preparing a tribute to you in your time at Westminster, I decided to follow an exhortation found in the book of Job, which he delivered to his friends. Ask the beasts, they will teach you. And what better creature of the Lord to turn to than the panda, as you well know. <laughs> we have exchanged panda wisdom all year on the whiteboard in the classroom. I will miss that exchange. He's still up there. <clears throat> but panda has a few more things to say. Panda is amazed about your time here at Westminster. You have participated in drama and dance from your youngest years, right up through high school, acted in some 15 varied roles. Especially noteworthy is your contribution to this year's spring musical, choreographing the dance sequences. Literary, speech, forensics have all been a focus. You've earned awards in both. A career total of 558 points in debate places you in the top three debaters in Westminster's history. <clears throat> now, Panda's native language is Chinese, though he couldn't keep up with you in Latin or Greek, both of which you studied, earning four gold medals and a blue ribbon. <clears throat> Along with Panda Kara, 
I'd like to commend you for your individuality, your perseverance, and diligence. You are not half-hearted about your responsibilities, but embrace them, pursuing excellence in these tasks, desiring to honor the Lord in your walk. I think your presence on the stage is a paradigm for your walk in life. You reach out to the audience, you entertain, you exhibit a cameo of life in order to help us understand ourselves better. Soon you will be transitioning to the Honor College of George Mason University with a major in forensic science and film. Panda wants to go with you. <laughs> Lastly, Job's words of wisdom to his friends concludes with a life lesson. In the Lord's hand is the life of every living thing and the breath of mankind. Kara, go with the Lord who gives you breath. So. Thomas Polk, please come forward. <laughs> I hope that tops Indiana Jones. <laughs> Thomas, when I hear the theme song to the original Star Wars movies, I think of you. The song captures the essence of the movies, hope in the midst of the impossible. Can the rebels win? No way, but they do. Can Thomas, the youngest of the Polk kids, survive the chaos, the goading, the sibling abuse, and rise up in his own right and achieve the Polk standard of excellence established here at Westminster? <laughs> yes, indeed. No small task as you were preceded by four siblings who each set a high bar of accomplishment, leaving a legacy at Westminster that you have aptly extended and expanded upon. A member of both the National Beta Club, the National Honor Society, a four-year varsity soccer player, six-year runner in cross country, and a dedicated member of my advisory group. <clears throat> These accomplishments are more than just a line item on a resume or checklist. They represent your hard work, your focus on student responsibilities, and your commitment to excellence, even in the face of challenges. But there's another story. Like the Star Wars movie, it isn't just the rebels versus the empire. It's also the personal story of Luke Skywalker. The personal story of Thomas Polk, a young man devoted to the Lord, discipling younger students, demonstrating kindness and generosity, a prayer leader. These qualities and more I observed through your, our years together in class, in advisory, and on campus. Thomas, continue to walk with the Lord as you <clears throat> depart for UGA as a major in biology. One last thought, the Star Wars trilogy is just a story but the hope portrayed in it is real. I extend to you this blessing from Romans chapter 15. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that the power of the Holy Spirit may abound in hope. Ogden Tab, please come forward. Ogden, uh, tomorrow you'll walk up to the front and officially become a graduate of Westminster Schools of Augusta. That is a significant accomplishment built upon years of hard work, choices, and commitment to the Lord. Teaching you this school year in environmental science has given me the opportunity to observe your lifestyle your interactions with friends, and to pray for you and with you almost on a daily basis. I so admire the quality friendships that you have demonstrated, how you interact encouragingly with your friends, sometimes with a bit of distraction in the back corner of the classroom, but, but that's okay. I've seen friends turn to you for support, for advice, and for care. The teacher side of me so appreciates your interest and engagement in the subject matter. 
I never felt as if I was forcing you to think environmentally. Rather, you have identified with the principles, learned about the issues, and have decided to major in environmental science in the fall at Georgia State. Now, all you need to do is trade in your gas car for an electric vehicle. <clears throat> oh, by the way, I have a Tesla for a really good price if you want. <laughs> You don't shrink back from responsibility. I applaud your perseverance and long working hours at Chick-fil-A, becoming a trainer in the process. Clearly, you have established a foundation in your life that will serve you well as you move into your adult years. A vital aspect of your foundation is your reliance upon the Lord. I bring to you a verse as a light for your pathway. <clears throat> Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may prove what is the will of God, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect. Congratulations. Janet Zhu. Janet, three things I admire and respect about you are your courage, your desire to learn new things, and your love for your family. Your Corral teacher, Mrs. Flurry, said the first word that comes to mind when she thinks of you is courage. She spoke of your courage and leadership in chorus, singing solos and parts by yourself. You've left your home in China, come here to study in the U.S., living with an American family, adjusting to life in the South. <clears throat> the second thing I respect about you is that you are a person who is open to and desires to learn new things. Throughout your life, you've learned a lot by reading literature from different countries, including America, England, and Russia. Recently, you told me you were reading the book Crime and Punishment by the Russian writer Dostoevsky. Last year in the Introduction to Christianity course, you and I had some interesting and lively discussions. Even though we disagree concerning the truth of Christianity, you were always willing to listen and discuss the ideas presented in class. And talking with you, I know you want to learn not just information, but also lessons about life. I pray the things you have learned here at Westminster will be helpful to you as you live your life. A third thing I respect about you is the love you have for your family. You have spoken and written of the influence both your mother and father have had on you. You love your brothers who have missed you while you've been here and are looking forward to seeing you in a few days. As you get ready to go to Penn State University and major in chemistry, I leave you with these challenging words from Proverbs 9, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. We almost had a highlight. <clears throat> what are we doing? Okay, Maya, come up here. Mm, Maya, there's a formula to these sort of things, a script, you might say. I think you're familiar with those. There's an opening scene, usually some sort of amusing anecdote. Move on to more heartwarming moments of affirmation. Cl conclude with some sort of pithy phrase, heartwarming challenge, all that. Um, I struggled with yours, though, didn't know how to begin, just wrestled with it. I thought about opening with some sort of short joke, but that would be belittling to someone of your stature, and that's just not called for. <laughs> no one who has seen my on stage would joke about her stature, of course. You've been one of the leading ladies of Westminster drama these past three years. I mean, not just any bell could so thoroughly win the heart of the beast as you did. <laughs> you stand out in the classroom. I truly do appreciate that, I mean, this is serious, I have no idea what's fixing to come out when you show up, right? I mean, insightful comments, check. Biting sarcasm, check. Self-deprecating gallows humor, check. 
impromptu shopping for a review book that you really should have ordered weeks ago. Check, no, really, like the middle of like the third to last class, she's back there like, I need a review book. Um, there's that. Commentary on the latest in the never-ending circus that is American politics, yes. The overall ongoing free-for-all that was my AP government back row, yes, check. When, in, all that, in all seriousness, I must say how much I admire, though, your willingness to think deeply about the world around you and to stand up for the things you believe in, even when it's very, very difficult to do so. In clothing, closing, I have no pithy or insightful statements. Sorry about that. It's not really my thing. All, can I, all I can say is that I've greatly enjoyed having you in class these last three years. You are a fantastic young woman, and I will miss not having you around next year. I wish you all the best. Julia Andrews. There are three types of students that walk the halls at Westminster, and they are categorized by the seating choice they make on the first day of class. You have your back row sitters, who on the majority of days are present in body only. The second row sitters, who are there in body and mind and spirit, but they need that barrier of protection that the front row provides them with, just in case the teacher directs any questions to the class. Finally, you have your front row sitters who are there to annotate, annotate every word, note, gesture, cough, hiccup, sneeze the teacher utters in case one of those show up on a test at a later date. Julia Andrews is a front row sitter. She is diligent, engaged, assertive, and focused. There is no task that Julia doesn't approach without her decisive determination. These traits make her a great leader and she is a leader in every aspect of the word. That focus, engagement, and assertiveness have been with Julia for as long as I've known her. Even as a freshman, I can recall Julia asserting one of her definitive stances during practice. Caroline Polk, our senior captain, used to remark, yes, queen, as a humorous way of encouraging the other girls during particularly intense sessions. I thought, well, I'll join in and encourage the girls with a bit of levity as well. But it wasn't even a microsecond after I had uttered the S at the end of yas in the phrase yas queen that Julia turned quickly to me and definitively just said no. <laughs> I never got to say the encouraging term queen. And honestly, it's probably for the best. Yes, Julia is assertive, but she also has the counter trait to assertiveness in abundance, humility. I cannot tell you how many games we moved Julia to a new position, center back, attacking midfield, forward, and Julia performed with huge success. Even though it was evident to everyone watching just how great Julia was, after most games, she would ask me how to improve or ask for forgiveness for not performing to perfection. As a coach, this self-reflection at such a young age is something to be treasured. Here at WSA, we are called to be like Christ, and Jesus tells us in Matthew that he is gentle and humble in heart. These are aspects that I got to see in Julia as a student and player for over five years. I tell the soccer girls that every game in practice should be approached with a servant's heart, and I knew that this captain, Julia, would lead with that every time. Those characteristics will serve you well as you go to UGA and beyond. Julia, those characteristics will help you serve others as you lead them well. And I tell all of my students this, um, and I mean it. I love you, and I am so proud of you. Sydney Roseman. Whoa, slow down there, Lightning McQueen. That's right, there's a speed limit here. 
Let's be mindful of all the little ones and grandparents in the audience. Nice job. You made it up here at a respectable pace. All right. <laughs> it's no surprise that she made it here to me, as I've had the distinct privilege of coaching and teaching Sydney for the past four years. And I can tell you that her intelligence and creative insight that helped bring her to this moment have both been present since her freshman year. In fact, Sydney was one of the architects behind our soccer team's theme and motto for the season. And honestly, it is more thoughtful and brilliant than anything that I could have come up with myself. The team's motto was e pluribus unum, which means out of many, one, or one from many. Sydney went on to tell us that the basis for this was the founding fathers like Jefferson wanting to create a strong nation out of many different but unique states. And the biblical basis was Romans 12, 4 through 9, where Paul discusses the body part, the many body parts that each have a unique function. The comparison Paul makes with the body's many parts is to the diversity among Christ's body of believers and their unique talents and gifts and purposes. Sydney connected the idea that each player on our soccer team had unique gifts and traits. And much like the body of Christ and the individual United States, each one serves a different role to the function of the whole. After hearing this perspicacious and brilliant message from someone so young, one of my assistant coaches, as Sydney is delivering this speech, leans into me and incredulously whispers, oh my goodness, how smart are these girls? The answer I gave was a simple one, very. <laughs> it's that understanding and insightful nature that Sydney exhibited on that night at the Bryan House that wowed us all, and it is those incredibly unique and intricate gifts bestowed by our Creator on Sydney that is going to enable her to continue to set the world ablaze for His kingdom. Sydney, you are an incredibly brilliant and unique part of the body of Christ, and I am excited to see what you do with all those incredible talents. Once again, I love you, and I am so, so proud of you. Don't start the timer. This one I have to go down for. Might need this, right? right. Y'all will understand why I'm doing this in a second. Reagan Lutz. <laughs> the first two fruits of the Spirit mentioned by Paul in Galatians are love and joy. If you have ever spent even a couple of minutes in the presence of Reagan Lutz, then you have undeniably experienced these two attributes. Reagan's love for others and joie de vivre have both been readily apparent since I have known her. I have had the privilege of coaching Reagan in soccer for the past five years, privilege of teaching her in English, and working alongside her on the yearbook. So I'm blessed enough to have witnessed countless moments that reflect these traits. But one of my favorite examples occurred during Reagan's freshman year on the girls' soccer retreat to Atlanta. We had taken two of the Westminster buses, with one coach driving one bus and the other coach driving the other one. Our one parent chaperone had been riding in the bus filled with the freshmen and sophomores and desperately requested to switch to the bus that I was driving. After riding in my bus for a couple of minutes, this mother exclaimed, oh, this is great. And I asked her if the freshmen were a bit too much to handle her response was curt and exhausted. That little redhead sure does love to dance. <laughs> and as she said this, I just so happened to look up at the other Westminster bus in front of us, and sure enough, at the back of the bus, there was that little redhead just breaking it down with her teammates right there. Even as a freshman, Reagan was there living her life with pure joy as only she can do. It's not only joy that Reagan exudes, but her love for others is unmatched as well. 
Reagan had the unfortunate circumstance of tearing her ACL during her second game of her senior season, an injury that I can tell you from experience is a tough one. But she didn't let this event distract her from sharing love. The Westminster girls had just played a game that left the coaches and the entire team upset about the outcome. And once again, there was Reagan asking me and the others if they wanted a hug. Someone who had lost so much right there, giving so much. Um, that's the Reagan Lutz that I know. Here at Westminster, that's the type of woman that we hope we send off into the world. I know God will use Reagan and her gifts to be salt and light in a world that desperately needs it. Reagan, I love you and I am so, so proud of you. Here you go. Elizabeth Renee Rucker, spotted at the Westminster gym, looks like E is now a college girl. <laughs> My very first memory of sweet Elizabeth was on our junior field trip. She was joyful and full of energy and unable to see clearly, I guess. I watched as she ran straight into a glass door at full speed. We laughed and Liz was fine, but that was my first impression of this young lady that I would be helping get into college. <laughs> as I got to know Elizabeth more, I quickly recognized what a bright, talented, and bubbly person she is with clear goals for her future. Since day one, Elizabeth has known exactly where she wanted to go, and of course, she was accepted to Lee University soon after applying. More importantly though, since day one, Elizabeth has known exactly who she is in her faith. She stands confidently as a daughter of the Most High King, and this identity is what she treasures most. Ms. Schillingsburg, her coach and teacher said, Elizabeth reminds me of Martha. She always wants to do the right thing and notices when others don't. She's not loud about this, but she truly desires for everyone to make the most of every opportunity they are given. Ms. Poss went on to say that when she met Elizabeth, she knew that she was the real star of the family. Elizabeth, your teachers and admin are thankful for the way you lead well in seeking to do the right thing. I love you and I'm very proud of all your accomplishments. You have brought sunshine into my office every day when you sit in your chair. May you continue to pray through each situation, asking the Lord to give you wisdom and guidance on when to act and when to remain still. You are a smart and sweet and beautiful person, Elizabeth. Your smile is infectious and your heart is earnest and full of goodness. I cannot wait to see all that you will accomplish as you continue to trust in your Heavenly Father and use your many talents to impact our world for the better. Claire Crowder. Claire is one of the babies of her class, still only 17 years old. Because she's so smart, she skipped a grade. Nevertheless, her age doesn't hold her back. Claire is emotionally intelligent beyond her years. People truly cherish time with her because of her disarming nature and that Chandler Bing smile. I've learned a lot from Claire the, the last few years. She shared her passion for travel, her appreciation of Taylor Swift and lo-fi and other country artists I'd never heard of, and her ability to analyze sophisticated Spanish stories. She's taught me that RX bars are good, wearing tights is bad, and overall, it is just not cool to be older than 29 years old. <laughs> In addition to all these lessons from Claire, I have seen that she has a wonderful sense of humor and can easily make anyone laugh. She loves sacrificially and puts others above herself. Claire, you are a gentle and trustworthy leader that others willingly follow. You have a beautiful way of uniting different people and making everyone feel valued and heard. Maybe it's your witty nature or your unique ability to stylishly pull off a lime green kimono. Either way, people feel at ease when you're around. 
Claire, do you know what a gifted and strong person you are? You can be a mediator, a counselor, a comedian, a tutor, a coach, and more all in one day. Continue to use your many talents to bring joy to others' lives. This is desperately needed in our dark, broken world, and you are a refreshing source of encouragement and understanding wherever you go, and I pray that will continue to be true of you. And remember the words of Dwight K. Schrute. You only live once, false. You live every day. You only die once. Wise words to remember as you head off to college. Live every day grateful for your blessings. Live every day intentional in all your relationships. Live every day seeking Christ and using your life to bring glory to God. I'm looking forward to seeing you visit in the fall as you inevitably will. Sam Williamson. <clears throat> Some have called him the king of downplay, others the king of procrastination. Some have noticed his perfect, unenthused, monotonous tone. Classmates will remember his gifted writing and sharp mind. Friends in his middle school Bible class will remember his fine movie directing and acting skills and his ability to spell the word yarmulke. Teachers will remember his thought-provoking devotions and his confident leadership. We will all remember his easygoing gait, walking down the halls with his jeans tucked into his boots and his block college sweatshirt. I personally remember all these things in addition to his appreciation for thoughtful debate. The age-old saying goes, still waters run deep, and this is certainly true of Sam. Whether it be a discussion of history or literature or theology or music, Sam has a passionate opinion, and he will voice it if you give him the chance to speak. Sam, you are such an intelligent, talented, and well-rounded young man. When you commit to something, you chase it with tenacity and grit. You have accomplished much in your time in high school, from Eagle Scouts to Watson Brown, SLT to debate society, swimming, running, singing, playing the guitar, studying, making great grades. I'm confident that you will continue to excel in college as long as you remember to pack a computer charger. <laughs> there are many new experiences, new people, and new lessons awaiting you. And there will be an abundance of opportunities for you to formulate new passionate opinions and to voice your perspective. Remember the words that you studied in Proverbs, for the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. My prayer over you and challenge to you, Sam, is that you continue to seek wisdom and truth, and through that, your words and steps will please the Lord. Bennett Duckworth. <laughs> it's hard to believe that this shy student that I met at the beginning of the year is the same student I'm speaking about today. <laughs> Bennett is already a man of few words, but even more so when I first met him. Today I look at Bennett and I see a confident young man who is a servant leader and has vision for how his leadership impacts those around him. Bennett is known around the theater program as having an incredible amount of swagger. He wears sunglasses indoors and is always doing the coolest moves. Bennett's artistic ability, meeting his approachable kindness, made the match for a wonderful leader. I was blown away with how Bennett took initiative and grew in the short time that I've known him. I was even more impressed when I saw his incredible artwork at the AP Art Show. I could clearly see which pieces were Bennett because his personality was splattered on the canvas in art pieces. Bennett, as you leave Westminster and head on to Georgia State University and build your life, I pray that you remember that the world is your stage. When I look at you, I see an endless world of possibilities that lie before you. But don't forget who you are. You are a son of the king, and the Lord delights in you, Bennett. That is your identity and the only one that matters and sustains. I am confident that you will continue to live your life with swagger and that you'll inspire others to find their own swagger. When you're in the room, you're always inspiring joy and laughter. 
and I am beyond blessed to have been your theater director. Meditate on these words from Proverbs 3.5. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. Everything else is temporary. The word of the Lord stands firm. And I pray every beautiful and good thing over you, Bennett, as you move on to this next season of life. John David Kasner. J.D., you've had a great career here at Westminster. You're a key part of your senior class, and I know that they will never forget you. Never forget your time with friends, and all of these guys will never forget you, especially Matt Ross. You've proven your willingness to compete in athletics over the years as you excelled in football and swimming and baseball. And even though this year didn't turn out like you thought it would, you still provided your team's leadership, even when you couldn't be out there as much as you wanted to due to your ACL. I've been extremely honored to be your coach the past four years and have enjoyed watching your leadership skills this past season on and off the football field. I was gonna talk a little bit about practices and games and all the fun stuff and Camp Highland and Wade and all the things and I was gonna talk about a conversation we had at a campfire after a big steak dinner after we hunted at Wade but then they cut my speech short, so you got lucky. You're always the life of the party. You always have something funny to say, and you always, even now, have a smile on your face. You even had a smile on your face when I came to visit you in the hospital, only minutes away from going into surgery. I've been so impressed with you over the years because you've always gone out of your way to say hello. You've always gone out of your way to have a long conversation with me, rather than just a head nod and a, what's up, coach? you know, like I get from a lot of folks. J.D., I can always count on you to, to talk to me. You're an extraordinary young man with many talents and many gifts. I look forward to seeing how God will use you in the days to come. I know living for Christ can be difficult sometimes. It is for me, and I know it is for all of us here. But I pray that you will seek God daily and that you'll prepare well to be a good husband, to be a good father one day. The verse I selected for you tonight is John 15, 5. It's one of my favorites. It says, Jesus is saying this. He says, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. I want to encourage you as you head off to college to chase Jesus, those two words. When you're tempted to do things like I am, remember me standing on the stage looking at you, telling you those two words, chase Jesus. Because apart from him, you can do nothing. But with him, you have great purpose and great power. Love you, buddy. Uh, I think I'll just go this way. Colt Ingram is a four-year member of the debate team. He's a very talented and accomplished golfer, a leader of the Westminster golf team, and a proponent of supply-side economics. Colt is a fine young man who I've had the privilege of teaching for four years. I have known Colt since he was a freshman, and it has truly been a fun and interesting experience. It has been a special privilege to see him grow as a student on the debate team. In fact, he is recently the face of the Westminster debate team. Uh, according to this year's uh, shirt, if you can see. There he is right there, finishing a perfect swing. All right, it was Christmas time. Yeah, it was Christmas time. Uh, so we put a Dickensian hat on his head. So, um, well done, Colt. Uh, in all seriousness, Colt, uh, it has been great teaching you in class and coaching you in debate. I have enjoyed our discussions, uh, hearing your passion for golf and seeing how you engage with topics in economics class. It was a great experience as a teacher, uh, but also as a debate coach. I want to commend you on your progress these past four years, especially this year. Uh, and I want you to continue to cultivate your skills for argument and your desire to engage in discussion. 
Lastly, I want to let you know that I've enjoyed getting to know you, that I'm proud of you, and I want to leave you with some encouragement. As you continue on with your life, remember to always trust in the Lord. Whoever has God lacks nothing. Remember the words of theologian Frederick Buechner. Here is the world. Beautiful and terrible things will happen. Don't be afraid. Colt, God bless you, and congratulations. I know you'll do great, and it's been a true pleasure. Bring it in for the real thing. I know Jack Williford to be a newspaper magnate, a king, a clock, and the communist revolutionary Leon Trotsky. I also know him to be a wonderful and dedicated student with a good heart and a comedic spirit that enhances the classroom. When I first taught Jack as a freshman, I found him to be quite intelligent and perceptive, but fairly quiet. As I've gotten to know him over the years, I know him to have a fantastic sense of humor that he expresses through various personas and voices. I always look forward to seeing him act in plays. I know for a fact that he insists on incorporating his voices as he reads aloud in English class. Jack, you are not only gifted theatrically, I also know you to be an experienced member of the Westminster debate team. As your coach these past four years, I have appreciated your skill and dedication in addition to the levity your sense of humor brings to class. It has been a great experience to see you succeed these past four years, and I want to sincerely congratulate you on your Gavel Award. Jack, as you leave Westminster, I ask you to continue to hone your skills from debate. A talent for argument can serve you well in life. Also, don't lose the voices. Your memorable and intuitive sense of humor is one of God's gifts, and it is appreciated. Lastly, as you embark on the next phase of your life, continue to express a kind heart. Know that you will have many regrets in life, things said or done or left said, unsaid or undone. But the one thing you'll never regret is being kind. Jack, I'm truly grateful for having been your teacher. Congratulations and good luck. God bless you. I've known Calvin Puck for two years. In my time working with him as his teacher and debate coach, I have enjoyed his gift for discussion and argument, as well as his sense of humor. Shall we discuss the Dan detector? <laughs> Calvin, Calvin displays a wonderful and unique sense of humor as he curated a collection of memes, funny pictures involving me. For example, how many teachers can boast a photoshopped picture of themselves with a birthday cake presented to them by Pope Francis? <laughs> I find it endearing. In all earnestness, Calvin, I have greatly enjoyed being your teacher. I will always remember European history and our intense theological discussions. You added a great deal to the class, and I hope you always continue to express yourself and bring that level of engagement. Also, I am thankful for being your debate coach. You have contributed greatly to the team, and I will never forget your first attempt at Lincoln-Douglas debate. You rose to the challenge and competed successfully with minimal time to prepare the topic, and I am still very proud of you. As you leave Westminster, be sure to continue to be fearless in argument and discussion. The ability to confidently but cordially engage in debate is a valuable skill, and I hope you continue to apply it, whether it is in formal debates or not. I also pray you keep and cultivate your strong sense of religious philosophy. Lastly, I hope you keep your sense of humor. Humor is, in fact, a prelude to faith, and laughter is the beginning of prayer. Calvin, I know you're going to do great, and I want to sincerely congratulate you. God bless. about that big step. 
Y'all gonna be here a minute, so get comfortable. <coughs> Taylor Hawes. Tay, the very first thing that came to my mind was, she'll never let you fall. <laughs> I think that sums you up in a nutshell. You are self-sacrificing and always looking for ways to serve and encourage others. Whether it be a fellow cheerleader, a friend, or your family, you are there to catch people, to support them, and to love them. The parts of your character that I have grown to admire the most, your commitment to excellence and your devotion to others, have been evident both in the classroom and in the cheer gym. You understand that any skill worth having is worth working hard for. Things haven't always come easily for you, but you have amazing patience with yourself and you push yourself every day to improve. I have seen the same drive, commitment to excellence and dedication both in the classroom and with your team in the gym. The importance of family and relationships in your life became evident through advisory. Out of everything you shared, there was one very strong common thread running through them all, your deep bond and love for your family. Almost did it. <laughs> this is a gift that I pray you hold on to tightly. Taylor, you are a strong, sensitive, and confident young woman who is looking out for the good of others. You're a nurturer, warm-hearted and responsible, overarchingly looking out for the well-being of other people. There are many explanations of what a Proverbs 30 woman encompasses, 31 woman encompasses. She's responsible, diligent, disciplined, prepared, compassionate, clothed in strength and dignity. And to me, Taylor, this is you. My challenge is that you would continue not only to nurture those around you, but that you would recognize these attributes in yourself and nurture them with truth and love so that you can continue to grow and impact those around you. Be clothed in courage, purpose, and find your worth in Jesus. I love you. Love you. <clears throat> India. When preparing to write this for you, two themes kept coming to my mind. Self-expression and the journey. Oh. I recently read a quote by the late Martha Graham, a very talented modern dancer, and she said this about self-expression. There is a vitality, a life force, an energy, a quickening that is translated through you. And because there is only one of you in all of time, this expression is unique. And if you block it, it will never exist in any other medium, and it would be lost, India. You are so unique, and your ability to express your individuality is something that I admire a lot about you. Through your art, whether it be on your clothes, in your makeup application, on stage or otherwise, you tell a story, your story. In the coming years, as you are surrounded by people from all walks of life, I challenge you to keep telling your story, the real authentic story of you. <laughs> because it's beautiful. <laughs> the one that struggled, the one that questioned, the one that seeks truth, the one that needs encouragement, the one that doesn't have it all figured out but keeps digging. India, your story is beautiful and it's uniquely you. If you don't tell it, who will? The other theme that came to mind was the journey. Isn't that life? what life is, a journey for our souls? I know that you have a longing in your heart, and I pray that over the next months and years <clears throat> that your journey will feed your heart and soul, as I know you're hoping it will. Journeys can be tough, and they're not always pretty, but I have never experienced a journey in my life that I'm not ultimately thankful for and that has not somehow touched me in a positive way. My challenge to you, dear India, is that in the next chapter of your life, you will step out boldly to express your unique God-given spirit, that your heart would be open to his call and to the journey that ultimately leads your soul to fulfillment and to joy that is found far past any circumstances or societal boxes. I love you. I gotta get fun.
funnier or something. I don't know. <laughs> Chloe. Honestly, I feel like I blinked my eyes and you went from a spunky little freshman to a confident, beautiful young woman. But fortunately, I did not blink. Instead, I got a front row seat to what have been some of the most fun and formative years of your life. While in pursuit of the right words to say, all I could do is smile. I smile because your heart is so good and because everything that you have set your mind to achieve over the past four years, you have done with methodical care, deep passion, and fervor. And when things perhaps didn't go the way you had planned, you allowed yourself the grace to feel the real raw emotion, then you would turn and move forward in faith and trust. In the gym, you're a beast, doing everything to the best of your ability and never complaining. Well, almost never. <laughs> I learned very quickly that you're a fighter. You're servant-hearted, you lead by example, and you push others to be the best they can be. You seek to understand and to encourage. I love that you can tap into any version of yourself at any moment. Uh, you're both poised and respected while being silly and fun. You're responsible and methodical, but at the same time, carefree and spontaneous. I honestly think that if I asked you if you wanted to set a budget for yourself for next year or go skydiving, you would offer to work on the budget in the car on the way to the airport. But first, coffee. <laughs> I know that your parents have instilled in you some pretty amazing values, and I see that and shine through in the way that you have treated me and others over the years. You're grateful for what you have, and you don't think, take things for granted. I will miss you terribly next year. <laughs> you have been such a constant source of joy and a true blessing to my life. It was an absolute pleasure to be able to teach you this year. That's cool. As you prepare to start the next stage of your life at Furman, I pray that you will continue to be focused and work hard. Consider how your goals reflect the Lord and impact his kingdom. You have many gifts that draw people in. I know that the Lord has great plans for you, and I pray that your heart stays sensitive to how you can serve him and lead others. I love you. up, you know. <laughs> Y'all see the pineapple on my hat? Drew Cooks, social justice advocate, truth and authenticity seeker, pineapple enthusiast. These three attributes are the spirit of Drew Cooks. Drew, the Lord led you to Westminster and straight to my heart two years ago. Words cannot express the gratitude that I have for you and for the relationship that we have built over your time here. You have impacted my life so by so openly and honestly sharing your thoughts, convictions, values, and questions. The connection that we share would reveal itself over many conversations about our desire for social justice and the longing that we have for people to hear each other, hear themselves, and ultimately to know that we are all made in the image of God which explains why love, acceptance, and tolerance are of the utmost importance. Drew, you helped draw me out of myself and enabled me to examine some of my own biases and to ask myself some hard questions, and I thank you for that. Another attribute to which you hold fast is your deep desire for authenticity and truth, whether it be in conversations about relationships, class discussions, or even a simple argument between friends. I have seen you time and time again ask questions in the simple quest for truth. And then there's the pineapple. Yes, the pineapple. Of course, pineapples are delicious and symbolize warmth and friendship and hospitality, but for Drew, she likes them because they're cute. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to agree. It's a pretty cute fruit. But for me, however, I think you are actually very similar to a pineapple. Cute obviously. Friendship, warmth, and hospitality, yes, but also a pineapple is tough, and sometimes the prickly exterior hides its very sweet interior. 
Still being cautious, of course, I challenge you to share your heart, that sweet interior, with others at Fort Valley. You and they have a lot to gain by doing so. I encourage you to keep fighting for what is just and true. Keep asking those tough questions of others as well as of yourself. And I pray that you will open yourself up to more relationships that will strengthen you as well as to those who you can strengthen. I love you. That's for you. <laughs> Two criers back to back. Lucky. <laughs> Gee whiz. Allison Joyner. <clears throat> She's a pretty crier, though. From one artist to the other, Allie, don't give up. When someone can do the same thing for hours and hours and still find joy, curiosity, and excitement with the same activity, then it is, without a doubt, the thing you should try to get paid to do. Allie, your road has been rocky. You stumble, yet you manage to get up over and over again with a servant's heart and an unnatural optimism. You might have missed some tests and an exam and mostly first period but you did not miss out on the love for your siblings and parents, or the excellent leadership and service you provided in drama, or the unimaginable stories and creativity in my art room. You did not miss out on the relationships and friends with faculty here at Westminster. Your struggles did not darken your demeanor, as light continues to shine from you even now, from your creations, from your personality, from your love for God's people. It is our Lord's light that shines brightest from those who suffer. Your AP art show, um, I stated, she cannot keep up with creating as much as she visualizes creations. What an amazing worth you will be in art collaboration in future careers. Allison, your servanthood in art and drama is irreplaceable. Thank you for being my right-hand woman. First Peter 5.10. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm, and steadfast. Ali, continue to shine for his glory. Continue to show others what true humility looks like. Continue to love fiercely and know that you will always have a space in my art room and in my heart. Ruth Ann Case. <laughs> She's crying. She's not even walking up here yet. Oh, okay. My wild redhead artist who waits for no one as she brings life to a canvas. She is colorful in every way and brings fresh ideas with outside the box thinking for anyone in need. She has served with her creativity on endless teams throughout her years at Westminster mostly as one of our service student leaders. You strive for excellence and help others achieve goals that they thought were impossible. I am so proud of the young woman, the God-fearing woman that you have become. You seek justice and hope. You long for peace among the student body, and you compassionately serve. Watching Ruthie grow up in the art room, taking every class I have to offer, I was able to witness her love for people her love of hope, joy, and harmony among God's children. Her beautiful AP art this year reflected on people and their heritage, how their identity was found, and how beautiful each of us are. Ruth Ann loves people. It is obvious in her artwork, in her friends, and the tug on her heart to serve God's people in a new way. Ruth Ann will be serving and leading with the world race to serve in Costa Rica, Romania, and Cambodia. Our stories are such a part of who we are and who we become. 
Ruth Ann, I cannot wait to hear of your new stories, of your new chapters, as you continue to follow our Lord. 1 Peter 4, 8, above all, love each other deeply, because love covers a multitude of sins. Ruth Ann, your love for others is an extension of God's love for you. You know how much he loves you, and I know you will help others realize it as well. Allie Campbell. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These are the adjectives I would use to describe Tally. I hope you got to know Tally. I hope you got to really know her. Tally is funky but lovely. She is quiet, but her laugh is contagious. She is shy, but a powerful speaker and critical thinker. She is laid back, but an amazing work ethic. She is incredibly talented and a skilled artist, but is not boastful. Tally, it has been an honor teaching you art and working alongside you designing sets. Pretty sure she painted this sky back here painting murals, and recently building Westminster's first National Art Honor Society. But my most favorite part is watching you create in the art room. Your presence is quiet, but your words and thoughts are powerful. I am so thankful for you finishing high school here as a wildcat and here in my art room. You have finished well. You have been a blessing to this place, to this art department, and to many of your friends here. Tally is heading off to Honors College at Kennesaw to study illustration. I know you will excel on this path as you are able to keep up with the workload of beta, NAHS, NAHS, along with my AP class, drama, job, and all your other academic work. As Westminster's 2021 Art Spirit Award recipient, don't forget that the creative spark inside, the spark that keeps your imagination soaring, is the remarkable, cherished gift from our creator, the God of the universe. Because you love him and because he loves you, strive for truth, beauty, and excellence in all that you do and all that you create. Talia, I love you. Good evening. Sam Drake. In 2017, a character the other ninth graders referred to as Cheddar strolled into my classroom. I think two or three of his classmates said, what's up, but he dismissed them with a well-practiced sarcastic nod and asked me the first words he ever said to me, how hard is this class? <laughs> to which I responded, well, it depends. He then stared at me for about 10 more seconds and walked away. You see, Sam has the ability to communicate a very complex set of thoughts and feelings with a single glare. In the, offer, in the aforementioned encounter, I was not familiar with the language yet, but would have come, become familiar as it, the years went on. For example, one of our beloved freshmen, Mayday, <coughs> on the soccer team raises a hand to ask a question. Quick fact, ninth grade soccer players do not ask coherent questions. Uh, so when I see them raise their hand, instead of answering them now and wasting valuable calories, I direct them to Sam and in a single piercing gaze, he can communicate disgust, empathy, and sorrow. <clears throat> As a leader, Sam offers stability and accountability. His teammates know they can count on him to be honest and reliable, particularly the struggling players who are drawn to Sam. This is probably because Sam is a goalkeeper and it takes a special kind of something to tackle that slot. There's only one slot on the field. You have to be patient and persevere to earn it. 
Then, when you get the slot, you have to be psychologically stable enough to deal with the perception that goals are all your fault and you don't get any credit for the good stuff. Beneath his steely exterior lies an empathetic, caring soul. In addition, he has the capacity to persevere through almost any situation and uses his setbacks in life to grow. Case in point, he used the setbacks of his senior year to set his sights on continuing his soccer career at Covenant, something that no doubt is divine and strangely familiar. You have a very unique set of spiritual gifts that I anticipate will touch many lives. I want to leave you with a quote from the street poet and philosopher Drake. I was born to make mistakes, not fake perfection. And Sam, not only do you continue to grow because you practice this yourself, but you also have the grace to see it in others as well. We are very proud of you. Congratulations. See if I can pronounce this right. Matt Ross. <clears throat> when eighth graders enter high school, they open up a full FBI investigation on their upper school teachers. So my first interactions with Matt was him and my new advisory trying to get me to confirm or deny stories from my youth they've collected from various sources, which of course I denied. Unfortunately, at the time, my brother was on the SLT team, uh, so confidentiality got a little challenging. And let's just say he gave up more than I probably would have let on. Little did I know that some of my regrettable youthful escapades was all Matt needed to hear to gain a fierce advocate, dedicated manager, and now a friend. The following year, unbeknownst to me, I picked up an extra unofficial class. I'm not sure whose study hall Matt was supposed to be in, but pretty much every planning period, I was graced with the musings of the real-life embodiment of Jonah Hill in the movie Superbad. <laughs> At the time, I was genuinely frustrated because I needed to do work. But looking back, it's times like these that make education rewarding. I wish I could share all of the insights Matt had sitting on the couch during said periods, but the so-called racism probably wouldn't be appropriate to say here. My junior year, Matt had established a solid working relationship in the soccer program, a plan to bring back the Grow Michelle banana. Are we done what that is? No, no, oh, gosh. It's extinct banana that tastes like banana candy. It's lure to us, maybe, maybe somebody has tasted it. Um, but more importantly, he actually stepped up and started taking leadership roles in, in, the, in the junior class in the soccer team. Uh, and I was glad that that Matt had become a leader in our community because he's the type of guy that can make a difference in whatever he's a part of. He has the gift of keeping things lighthearted and is virtually impossible to offend. I am 95% certain that he will be a mayor somewhere eventually. But the fact is that he can take an otherwise obscure role like class president or soccer manager and turn it into something that genuinely matters as a tribute to Matt's many gifts. Therefore, I want to recognize Matt Ross with the long overdue best manager in the history of Westminster Soccer Award. <clears throat> the truth is I have no idea if Matt actually did any normal managerial duties <laughs> over the course of his tenure. Uh, but to say he's an integral part of the program would be a massive understatement. He kept the guys honest and humble. Uh, he added what I can only describe as the Ross factor. Uh, he will genuinely be missed next year. Matt, your future is bright and full of potential. I'm sure USC will be a great experience, and as Twain put it, you never let your schooling interfere with your education. You have a set of rare God-given gifts and a fantastic disposition to use them. You've made an art form, art form of gab, and there are a few people I can depend on to be as honest and trustworthy as you. I'm very proud of you and glad to call you a friend. Congratulations. See if I can pronounce this one right. J.I. <clears throat> the Hitchcock brothers are like different vintages of wine, <laughs> each with their own unique, nuanced traits that gradually blend together as they age. When J.R. started out in high school, he was like a Welch's grape juice box. <laughs> now I look at him, about to be an architect. I think he has a girlfriend maybe even now. It's, it's, it's incredible. 
right? <clears throat> Before I get too far into honoring the outstanding teammate and friend JR is, I want to start with a, with a gift. It's not wine, but it is drinkable. JR is a man of simple affections, and a vestige of his juice box past is the simple joy of post-game chalky milks. <laughs> Therefore, as you are now an alumnus and are always welcome on the sidelines, by the power invested in me, you can always have one of the team's chocolate milks when you're back in town for games. <laughs> We're just not going to give Mayday his. So. <clears throat> Most people might not guess this, but a pillar of our soccer program is something called FFF, which stands for forced family fun, where basically some of the guys have an incredibly awkward dance competition or something. In addition to making crucial contribution, con contributions on the field, he is somewhat of a savant at FFF. My favorites include the sandfly funeral skit, your most recent synchronized swimming routine with your senior classmates, and how could we leave out your solo performance lip syncing Despacito. JR also has some impressive stats on the field. He's basically our secret weapon because he has this uncanny ability to watch a game for a couple minutes, figure out a weakness in the other team, and then go on and score a goal before they know what hit him. Uh, thus, giving JR the best average goals per minute in Westminster soccer history. Okay. <clears throat> Everything I've talked about thus far is but a fraction of JR's resume. But what I think makes JR so special, or such a rare vintage, are his virtues. I'm not saying JR doesn't have skills to bring into society. In fact, I'm counting on you to successful, be successful as an architect so you can build me a house in whatever town Ross is mayor of. But <laughs> there is something that one feels when they talk to truly humble people. And, and you get that feeling with JR. Moreover, I think JR's spiritual gift is the ability to transmit the fruits of the spirit, whatever you have going on in life. When you talk to JR, your heart rate slows. He can convey compassion and humility just through listening. I think I speak on behalf of the entire coaching staff and your family when I say we are very proud of you and, you have, and if we have made a fraction of the impact on you that you have on us, then we can call the last four years a success. I have no doubt that you will continue to shine God's light in the next chapter, and I'm excited to see what he does in the coming years. <laughs> William Campbell. <clears throat> William and I have been through a broad spectrum of events in his time at Westminster. Everything from taking selfies with a moose 50 miles into a Wimanichi wilderness to the always eventful plane rides with Mr. Rich. From missing your second Colorado trip because of quarantine to missing preseason on your fifth quarantine. We've had highs and lows in the soccer world and seen lighthearted and tough times in school. But one constant for pretty much every school day for the past couple of years is William and I starting our day around 7.50 in the smelly old bio lab. Some major decisions have been made there in that five to 10 minute range. Other times we just sit there, stare. Sometimes William's cramming for a test. Sometimes I'm frantically trying to figure out what to do with the massive amount of freshmen about to enter the room. Regardless, it was in these small moments that and many others uh, where I got to know a phenomenal soccer player, an outstanding leader, and an all around good dude. Most of you have seen William play soccer. It's a strange, quirky mix between Clint Eastwood and Mr. Fred Rogers. In one moment, he's sending a guy hurling through the air, and the next moment, he's making sure he's OK and remembers what state he is in. Obviously, soccer is a big part of both of our lives, but William already realizes that soccer is more than just a series of outcomes. It is our mission field. It's not every day you see a high school player sacrifice the opportunity to play at the national level to help coach youth academy at our local club. The greatest soccer manager of all time, Sir Alex Ferguson said, the experience of defeat, or more particularly, the manner in which a leader reacts to it, is an essential part of what makes a winner. We've won state championships together, and we will cherish those moments. But there was something special that, something 10 times more special that happened in the Final Four this year. In addition to leading a very young team beyond their potential, there were two things that stood out in the, when we lost in the semis. First, when Jeffords missed his PK, you sprinted to go put your arm around him. Second, 
I noticed when the game was over, all of the freshmen who hadn't played a second in the playoffs were crying. A kind, this is a testament to the type of inclusive leader that you are. I can't say enough how proud we are of you and how honored we are to be a part of your journey. I look forward to seeing you play Covenant with Thomas, Sam, and Kale, even though Kale, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and can't wait to see what the future holds for you. I think one day you might make one heck of a coach. Congratulations. <clears throat> Kayla, come on up. As I think back over the past few years that I've taught Kayla, the first thing that I will remember the most about her is not her high achievement in my classes over the past three years, but her dedication to working hard even when she didn't quite fully understand something. This is a quality that will serve you well in life. You've never shied away from the difficult things. You might have complained to few times, but you never quit. As the Lady Vols basketball coach Pat Summit said, quit? Quit? We keep scoring life because it matters. It counts. Too many people opt out and never discover their own abilities because they fear failure. They don't understand commitment. When you learn to keep fighting in the face of potential failure, it gives you a larger skill set to do what you want to do. Kayla, I have seen you fight and stay committed. I am proud to be your teacher, and I know that you're going to do awesome at the University of Tennessee in the fall. The second thing that I'll remember about you is that you are confident and grounded in who you are as a Christ follower. Many times we have had great conversations about all kinds of topics, and this confidence always seemed to shine through. I pray that your new peers at UT will see this as well. Remember what Peyton Manning once said about being a volunteer. You're not just here for four years. You're really here for the rest of your life. There is a bond here, once of all, always of all. Your relation, use your relationship with Christ to influence those who create bonds, who you would create bonds with by remembering Colossians 3.17. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to the God the Father. Congratulations on finishing this chapter of your life. I'm so proud of you. Michaela. Michaela is a dedicated, hardworking, and delightful young lady that I have had the privilege of teaching for the past three years. In that time, I've enjoyed watching her strive to become the best that she can be in all that she does. Her commitment and work ethic have been greatly appreciated by me. AP Calculus was a struggle at times. But because of your diligence, I am happy to say that you made it a success. I am so proud of you and cannot wait to hear about your time at West, uh, at, huh, you already had Westminster, at Mercer University. All right. I was curious about your school, and so I looked it up and found out that it had started in 1833 by Baptists in Penfield, Georgia, and was later moved to Macon in 1871. In 1924, the student body voted to have their mascot become the Bears. With this in mind, I would challenge you to remember five words and phrases that spell out the Bears. Balance, empathy, attitude, resiliency, and sense of purpose. First, I would encourage you to find a balance between working hard and having fun. Second, the world needs more people like you that have empathy. Never forget your family's background and where you came from. Third, as American author Og Mandio said, continue to have the attitude of a student, never be too big to ask questions, Never know too much to learn something new. 
This view has served you well in my classes and will continue to do so in college. Fourth, with resiliency, remember that life is not a sprint, but a marathon. And you will need perseverance, pacing, and your Lord to help you get through those tough times. He never promised we would not have tough times, but he did promise that he will always be with us. Finally, have a sense of purpose. As one website defined it as the motivation that drives you towards a satisfying future. The Lord will be the one to help you with this. Remember Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans for welfare and not for evil, to give you a future and a hope. Congratulations on finishing this stage of your life. I'm so proud of you. Okay, we have one more speaker tonight, but he was unable to be here with us, so we have some videos for you of him giving his senior tributes. Camelita Williamson. Huh? <laughs> so who knew that having your brother in an FCA Bible study I led for Aquinas baseball players 10 to 11 years ago would lead your parents to Westminster in search of another high school destination for you during your junior year? As you look back, I hope Westminster was as big a blessing to you as you were to us. My prayer for you from the beginning has been for God to change your heart, not because you were a bad kid, but because I knew my time with you would be limited to just 18 months or so. And yes, like most kids, your heart needed to change. And God was faithful because your heart did change. My coaching career is chock full of stories about student athletes who needed to make a change in order to fulfill their potential. You, Cammie, are one of those stories. From your cluelessness about how to play defense to your desire to make everyone laugh at least once per practice, to your penchant to drive home and take naps before our late practices, you were a giggle a minute to coach from the get-go. You were a gamer on a team that lacked gamers. You were tough but lovable, blunt but truthful, and you lived each day like it was your last. Now you leave a sports world behind full of memories and begin to embrace the world of post high school education. I'm asking God to lead you through this new world. Therefore, I've chosen John 14, 15 through 17 as your scripture verses. If you love me, obey my commandments and I will ask the father and he will give you another advocate who will never leave you. He's the Holy Spirit who leads into all truth. The world cannot receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him. But you know him because he lives in you now and later will be in you. As you mature, I pray that you would rely upon your 18 months you had with us at Westminster and press forward, embracing the challenge of college and finishing the race that's before you.
Kaylee Bakeman. You know, it seems like just yesterday when you were in eighth grade playing down at Josie High School against some Richmond County schools when Coach D and I went to watch y'all play, we knew you had the potential to be an amazing player. You were physically strong, unyielding, and driven by a spirit that demanded to know what you were doing wrong and just how you needed to go about fixing it. You were highly coachable. And that's a basketball coach's dream. But like when an old-timey record player needle slides off of a record and scratches it, you chose not to play hoops your freshman year. This sets you back in terms of your development in basketball. But a triumphant return to the game your sophomore year allowed you to catch up quickly because once again, your intrinsic desire to be the best and most well-rounded person you could be allowed you to accelerate your learning curve in hoops. That's a little about Bake the Player, but Bake the Person is even more impressive. Your love for babies and toddlers, your ability to look others in the eye when you're speaking or listening to them, your love for your family and for the Lord and what he's done in your life, and your penchant for accepting others and finding the good side of everything and everyone around you are your core character traits. You are consistently loving, notoriously optimistic, and a hopeless romantic at heart. Simply put, you're one of those rare individuals who possesses the character with which others can rarely, if ever, find fault. Even your decision to stay home and attend Augusta University, go Jags, was one met without angst, a, rare, a rarity amongst most Westminster graduates I've met who have made or been forced to make the same decision to stay home and attend AU. Now, as you are head off to AU to pursue a career in healthcare, I pray the Colossians 323 prayer over you. Work willingly at whatever you do as though you were working for the Lord rather than for people. Bake, if you'll continue to trust in the Lord, you are headed for innumerable blessings in this life, and I cannot wait to see what he does with you. Mary Grace, M.G. Wiz, Apostle. For as long as my wife and I can remember, there's been this little brunette girl at church who hung out near the front pews each Sunday morning. She was engaged in the message our pastor was preaching. She'd smile and interact with everyone around her. You could tell she respected her family and valued her relationship with Christ. Once I found out this little girl was you and you were a Westminster student, I began to encourage you to play basketball. Why? Not because you were a great player. Instead, it was because I knew our team needed someone with your type of character and affection for the Lord. I promise you, no head coach can ever have too many of those types of players. You thought you would never play a meaningful role for our team. You approached me your freshman year, like many players do, wanting to know what you could do to earn more playing time. Now, the key word there that you used was earn. You weren't interested in a handout or some sort of magic pill. You wanted to earn your role. My message to you at that time was you weren't ready yet, but I shared that I'd be surprised if your role didn't increase in the coming years and just to focus on improving day by day. So lo and behold, your senior year arrives and you had to play a bigger role than you could have possibly imagined. You were the vocal leader and chief encourager on a team that already had four seniors, but lacked a voice. Your voice became our voice. I chose 1 Timothy 4.8 as your verse. Physical training is good, but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. Wizzy, your life's training and God's word is about to pay off. Your spiritual compass is about, is about to become your go-to as you go to Baylor University and begin to carve out more playing time in life. Because in this life, it's time for you to assume the role of a starter. And this time, 
you have all the skills you need to become a great one.
lemon drops high above the chimney top as well. You find me oh somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. And remember to that you did to oh why oh why can't I? Open you take that jump you don't feel the fall Hope when the water rises you build a wall Hope when the crowd screams out you screaming your name Hope if everybody runs you choose to stay you fall in love and it hurts so bad And keep you always May your wishes all come true May you always do for others And let others do for you May 
strong foundation when the wind changes you may your heart always be joyful may your song always be sung Good evening, everyone. As our senior class president, I've been asked to come and give a gratitude statement from the class of 2021. Our class has so many people to whom we owe thanks and honor. To begin, our teachers, who have not only equipped us with an outstanding education, but who have stepped in as friends, therapists, advisors, and on more than one occasion, someone we could come to in our time of need. The world could use more teachers like those at Westminster. It would be a far better place. To the administration, thank you for putting up with every tardy, grade check, and senior sleepover petition. Without you all helping in the background, we never would have found ourselves here today. Whether it's those keeping our campus in amazing conditions, working our schedules out and planning our days, or signing our late slips and taking parent emails, you have all served us more than we could ever thank you for. And lastly, to a group whom we truly owe all our accomplishments, we want to thank our parents. Parents, you have sacrificed financially, spiritually, and in many more ways to provide us with a Westminster education, and for, your, and for your many sacrifices to us, we would like to present you with the display of our gratitude. At this time, I will have my fellow classmates come join me at the front of the stage to receive a rose, which we will present to you as a gift for all you have done. We are all so thankful for what each and every person here has done to make this night possible. Thank you all.
Okay. Thank you all for coming tonight and joining with us as we celebrate this senior class. We're looking forward to celebrating them to more, some more tomorrow at graduation. Um, seniors, we love you very much. You are a memorable class and you have won our hearts. Um, we hope that you know how special you are to us and have um, felt celebrated tonight and are looking forward to graduation tomorrow. So I'm gonna close us all in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this night that we could come together and honor each one of these seniors. And we praise you because you have made each one of them fearfully and wonderfully in your image. Lord, we thank you for the relationship that you've allowed us to build with these kids. And we thank you that you know them even better than we do. You know their thoughts and their actions. You know a word before it's even on their lips, Lord, and you know the number of hairs on their head. So Lord, I pray that your hand of protection would be on each one of these young men and women as they leave here and they go into this next chapter of their life, Lord. And just as Mr. Case said, Lord, I pray that you would help them to stand firm in their faith. I pray that you would give them a deep desire to draw near to you, that you would put people into their lives who pour into them and who challenge them and help them to grow in their faith, Lord. And God, I pray that you would give them to opportunities to grow and serve you and bring you glory. We thank you for the many blessings that you've lavished upon us. In your name we pray. Amen. See you all tomorrow.